could all use some good news right now. Doesn't it seem so? Seems like all we hear are horror stories of things getting worse and more and more situations feeling like they're spiraling out of our control, controlling our lives and dominating us and we can simply do nothing other than let it wash over us. Everybody disagrees and has arguments about what exactly the cause and solution of these problems are, but it seems like the one thing we can agree on is that there are these widespread problems. So, what's the good news? Is there any? I think this week's lectionary text has some key insights as to what good news is, right? So, in the Gospel of Mark, in chapter 1, we hear that Jesus is preaching the good news of God, right? Uh, in fact, the word gospel means good news, right? Whenever you're preaching the gospel, you're giving good news to somebody. The good news about what, right? The good news about God and Jesus. But what does this actually mean, right? Like, why is this gospel so catchy? Uh, it says here that, you know, Jesus just walks up to Peter and Andrew, then called, uh, and Peter then called Simon, and uh, just says, hey, if you follow me, I'll make you a fisher for people. And for some reason, this is so catchy that they're just like, yeah, you know what? I think I think I'm gonna just drop my nets down over here and go follow you. And he goes over to James and John. It doesn't even say what he says, but it was so catchy, it was so appealing that James and John said, "Yeah, we're gonna buy Dad. Sorry, see you later," and <laughs> just leave him on the boat <laughs> by himself. Uh, Mark doesn't actually tell us though much about what the actual content of what Jesus was teaching was. Mark's gospel doesn't have a whole lot of sermons in it. It's much more focused on actions, right? The miracles that Jesus did, his death and resurrection, you know, who were the people he was talking to, these kinds of things. It still leaves us with the question of what was Jesus's good news? Well, I think if we dig a bit into the idea of good news and into the gospel of Mark, we can get a bit of a clearer picture as to what Jesus was exactly saying to these people, the good news that he was bringing to them, right? I mean, we could also look at the other Gospels, which have much more of the uh, Jesus' sermons, but let's pretend we're not going to do that right now, right? So in Mark, uh, we see Jesus' ministry as that of performing a lot of healing miracles, right? Whether it's uh, somebody that is blind that can now see, whether it's somebody that can't walk can now can, or whether it's somebody that was demon-possessed now being free of the demons, right? So what do all these different miracles have in common? Well, one thing is that the way that these miracles worked is that uh, they weren't just healing a person of, you know, a physical ailment or something like that, right? All of these ailments, you know, were problems, but the main reason that they were problems because the way those elements manifested in that society at the time, in first century Judea, was that they ended up excluding these people from like normal civil functions. Right? If you were blind, you couldn't really do much other than sit on the corner and beg. You know, if you were possessed by demons, everyone was afraid of you and wanted to cast you aside. If you were a leper, you had to live away from society for fear of you being contagious. And when Jesus was healing these people, he wasn't just, you know, fixing a problem with their bodies. He was restoring them to full functioning within the community. And in fact, we can look at Jesus' greatest miracle, his death and resurrection, as something kind of similar to that, right? When Jesus died, he wasn't just uh, coming back from the dead and forgiving our sins, though he was doing that. The forgiving our sins comes as this broader process of Jesus miraculously healing the entire world and everyone within it, not just healing us so that we can function better within earthly society, but so that we can function metaphorically, right, and literally as members of God's society, as the kingdom of God. This is the good news of God or of the kingdom, as some versions of Mark say, right? This is the good news that Jesus was preaching, just as he healed people with physical illnesses so that they could function in society. Jesus' death and resurrection healed the whole world so he could function within God's society. I think that is kind of like what the good news that Jesus was spreading to the world, that 
yes, everything seems to be awful, and I'm sure society back then was even worse than it is now. Maybe. Who knows? But there isn't the way it has to be. A better world is possible. That is the good news that Jesus was bringing. So let's think about that this week. What would good news be to you, your friends, your acquaintances, people you know, your family, maybe your enemies? Even? What, what, would, what would it mean if they received good news? What would that look like? How can you help participate in bringing that good news to people and in bringing that good news into the world, right? How can we participate in the miracle of Jesus in creating a better world? A better world is possible. How can we help bring it about?